East Side Monster says something that I'm going to agree with. To be fair, Dan, the game changed, though, Big Sills. Salary cap has changed it. For sure. But isn't it funny? Let's take a look at the final four quarterbacks that were in the final four when it came to conference championships. I wouldn't say Patrick Mahomes is a rushing touchdown machine in Kansas City. Josh Allen had 36 touchdown passes. Um, Joe Burrow's not going to break any sundials or any of Hussein Bolt's records. Who else here? Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford. I hear the game has changed. Well, how come the dynamic of winning from the pocket hasn't? football show it is your boy big sales and welcome aboard and we always say this to you please hit the like button you'll thank me later thank you so much for stepping in with us we have an absolute power pack show for you today bottom of the hour at 3 30 eastern time the head basketball coach of the philadelphia 76ers doc rivers will join us and if traffic permitting Phil Sims at 5.30. Phil texted us and said, listen, I'm at a camp right now with my kid, and we're having our quarterback school right now. So Phil's like, Sills, if I get back, we'll do it today. If not, we'll definitely do it tomorrow. Till then, it is me and you, and we appreciate you coming aboard as you do every day. Thank you. God, it's littered with sports right now. You know, I, I always hear the people going, you know, hey, we got to wait – 95 days or whatever until the football season. No, you don't, man. There's so much going on right now surrounding the Eagles. They got OTAs going on right now. And I'll say this to you. You know how cool it must be to show up at OTAs and you see a completely different roster with more talent on it. And you're looking around the room going, look at where we are today compared to where we were two years ago. It is always great when you get a chance to show up to work and you know you're surrounded by veterans and you're surrounded by guys that are great. I mean, without a doubt, one of the things you like to show up to work at and say, I got talent around me. And if you're the Eagles right now and you're looking at the people that they've added to the football team, you're a year older as well, coming off a really – um promising year a year ago where you won nine ball games got to the playoffs you got to feel pretty good about yourselves coaching wise and also player wise we're going to hit on all of this here I'm going to hit on Nick Sirianni here first but I want to throw this out at you you know we kind of broached it a little bit yesterday about Kyler Murray and we kind of tied it into Jalen Hurts and he was at OTAs today and why I bring this up, do you know the number that they're throwing around for Kyler Murray? The word is in the 40s. And I'm not talking about beer. In the 40s. $40 million per. He showed up because his agent told him to show up. Steve Kime, the general manager of the place, is doing this. Yeah, he's our guy. Yeah, he's our guy. Yeah, he is our leader. The Cardinals are going to come up with a $40 million per year deal for him. You think the Eagles are even thinking that right now with Jalen Hurts? You think they're thinking anything of contract or money or what his value is? Or do you think, because again, think of this. After we got a good sense of what Joe Burrow was, and after you got a sense of what Josh Allen was, Buffalo started talking contract. The Bengals are already starting to talk what this guy's going to command because they want to get out in front of it. One thing you don't want to do, you don't want Joe Burrow going into a final year of a contract and have to come up with some money here. That guy want to get out in the open market? My God almighty, Joe Burrow would make $50 million in the open market today. Joe Burrow, if he was in the open market, 50, if you think Dak Prescott at $45 million, and again, we all think that that's overpaying a quarterback, what's that guy going to make? 
All of these general managers, like Howie Roseman, they got to get in front of this. How he did last year with Dallas Goddard, Jordan Malata. But I wonder where the Eagles are right now. Look at Steve Kime with Kyler Murray now. Think of this for a second. Kyler Murray has a couple of years left on his contract. And they're starting to hit on the numbers. $40 million. I don't think he's going to get a Deshaun Watson deal. Okay? Randall says $40 million per for Kyler Murray. He's done what in the league? Well, you don't actually think that Jalen Hurts is a better quarterback than Kyler Murray, do you, Randall? I mean, you're telling me you think your eyes, when you watch Jalen Hurts play and you watch Kyler Murray play, you think Jalen's better than him? Now, to maybe Randall's point, okay, you got Green and you got DeAndre Hopkins and you got Connor running the ball. And you got Cliff Kingsbury as a play caller. Remember, before Kingsbury got that job, he was going to be the OC at USC. Then somehow, magically, he ends up landing the head coaching job in Arizona. Weirdest three months I've ever seen for a coach. He loses his job at Texas Tech, becomes the OC at USC for Clay Helton, and then like a month later, the guy's the head coach of the Arizona Cardinals. You're like, huh? Okay, yeah, what? Never seen that dynamic. And the guy's actually turning out to be a pretty good coach. Okay? Chris goes, wait till Hurts agent asks for $40 million. How How are we already thinking of what quarterback to draft? If Murray gets $40 million per, then Lamar should get at least fifty-five. Okay, Mike, yeah. What is Hertz's value? Has not been determined. Put Kevin's up there, Xander. That's a good one. Kevin, what is Hertz's value? It has yet to be determined. We don't know really what his value is yet. That's a great take. And it's a great angle. I have not thought, what is his value? Still a second rounder? How about this? Do you think his value even is the franchise tag? Of 29-7? You wouldn't pay Jalen Hurts $29 million, $30 million right now, would you? Per year, you'd pay him $30 million? How much better is he than Gardner Minshew? Right? It's $30 million a year if he's a playoff quarterback. That's a bargain in today's NFL. Well, he is a playoff quarterback. It's funny. Get this. Nobody wants to pay Baker Mayfield $18 million. But you'll pay him double that almost? So you'll pay $30 million for Jalen, but you won't pay eighteen because that's what the salary and the option was for Baker Mayfield in Cleveland. He's getting that $18 million, no matter if he plays in Cleveland or he doesn't play or he plays somewhere else. That money's his. It's guaranteed. They picked the option up. So you're telling me you would pay him double almost with Baker Mayfield's worth? I might just take Baker Mayfield on my team, pick the 18 up and go, that's a bargain deal. Uh, by the way, I don't mean that. I'm thinking that money-wise. I don't, I, I don't think Jalen and Baker are that far apart in talent. They're not that far apart and he's cheaper. And you could actually afford to bring him in at 18 million, have him at 1.2 million, and he got $20 million. <laughs> And it's a market deal for two quarterbacks. Pretty crazy to think that. Not that I would do that. I'm just saying, if you think the gap in talent between Mayfield and Jalen Hurts is a big canyon, it's not. 16 TDs and nine interceptions is not a $30 million a year guy. Ryan says, I'd do 25. He ain't signing that. 
He ain't signing that. And again, the reason I'm bringing this up is because Kyler Murray's style of play is and does resemble how Jalen plays. So are we in that conversation? Do we look at that and go, and if I were Howie Roseman, I want to watch and see what Steve Kine does when it comes to a salary for him. I mean, would we not say this? The talent level on Arizona, it kind of resembles a little bit what's in Philly. Tight end, Dallas Goddard, Zach Ertz, DeAndre Hopkins, A.J. Brown. You got a better two in Devontae. Your slot guys, Quez, good speed. Okay? Your running back position, probably not as good as Connor. But effective, you were number one in running the ball. Okay? So it's kind of comparable. So he showed up at OTAs, and he's been at OTAs this week, even though he wasn't there last week. Davey Boy goes, Sills doesn't know that rushing TDs also count. I don't give a shit about rushing touchdowns. No, I don't. I don't care. Okay? I don't care about rushing touchdowns out of my quarterback. No, I don't. I do not care. Okay? The great quarterbacks that have played in this league don't give a shit either. You couldn't name me a quarterback that's in the top 20 that gave a shit about rushing touchdowns. Name me one. <laughs> name me one. Nobody gives a shit about rushing touchdowns out of the quarterback position. Okay? Nobody. Well, this guy had to. Who cares? I want my quarterback to win games in the pocket. Okay? I'm not talking Jalen here. I'm talking about style of play. And again, the reason that you signed a $100 million wide receiver is for one reason. Not to run the ball and have my quarterback have 10 rushing touchdowns. I want my wide receiver I want the guy I'm paying $20 million to to elevate my offensive passing game. Can he do it? Well, that's, again, the debate that we've had at nauseum. Now, give a shit about rushing touchdowns. Steve Young, really. Steve Young, when he left the game, Davey Boy, was the most accurate quarterback in the history of the league. And trust me when I tell you this. Steve Young with rushing touchdowns? Ah, eh, I think he was throwing to Jerry Rice and Terrell Owens. Just my opinion. Okay, rushing touchdowns. Yeah, okay. What did he have? Four? Rushing touchdowns. Ryan Tannehill ran for seven touchdowns. Ryan, isn't it always the stiff quarterbacks that you throw at me with that? Okay, it's always the stiffs that can't throw the ball. Well, he had 10 rushing touchdowns. Who cares? Think Aaron Rodgers, who can run if he felt like it? It cares about rushing touchdowns? I don't want that style of play. And you're not paying $100 million for wide receiver to block for your rushing touchdown quarterback. 43 rushing touchdowns. I guarantee you Jalen's probably got half that number and – Steve Young played 17 years. Okay? Whatever, dude. Steve Young didn't win Super Bowls with rushing touchdowns. (laughs) Oh, my God. 43 rushing touchdowns. Let me see. Josh Allen threw for 36 touchdowns. He's a rushing touchdown machine. Hey. I got to look at that, man. Hang on for a second. Let's take a look at the great quarterbacks in the NFL on rushing touchdowns. Let's see how great they were on rushing touchdowns. Top 20 quarterbacks of all time passing yards. Let's see. Oh, this is a great number, man. Look at all these tremendous rushing touchdown guys. Oh, my God. This is some list here. 
Look at this. Tom Brady, probably a great rushing touchdown guy. Drew Brees, unbelievable rushing touchdown. He's two. Peyton Manning, that guy could take off, and he could run a sundial 40. Unreal. Number three, Brett Favre, another rushing touchdown guy. Unbelievable. Ben Roethlisberger, now there's Big Ben at his best rushing touchdown. Phillip Rivers, man, that guy could jump over four quarters and have room to spare. Let's see here. I got to get my glasses on because, you know, these guys, these rushing touchdown guys, Dan Marino, what an amazing rushing touchdown guy. There's a guy that couldn't jump over a ruler, but what a rushing touchdown guy. Eli Manning, another legend on the field and on the gridiron. Fran Tark, oh, man, God, he could rush. Drew Bledsoe, Kerry Collins, man, these are rushing. These are all legendary rushing touchdown guys. Rushing touchdowns. Don't mean shit in the end when it comes to having a prolific passing attack. Even your boy Donovan McNabb knew that. What up, Zach? They count on the scoreboard. <laughs> yeah, they do. Let's see. They count on the scoreboard. Okay. You th- okay, let's see who the – okay. That's a great take. Who said that? They count on the scoreboard. Who are the winningest quarterbacks, one loss record in NFL history? Here we go. Let's see how many rushing quarterbacks we have. Miguel, what's up, Dan? Is Doc coming on today? 3.30, Junior. Let's see here. Most wins. Let's see how that relates to the scoreboard. Just saw it. The scoreboard. How about the most wins? Let's see how rushing quarterbacks translates into winning. Brady, 278 wins. <laughs> Peyton Manning, 200 wins. Two, two great rushing quarterbacks. Brett Favre, rushing quarterback. Drew Brees, rushing quarterback. Ben Roethlisberger's fifth, rushing quarterback. John Elway, another rushing quarterback. Dan Elway, another rushing quarterback. Joe Montana, another rushing Oh, my God, these guys. Look at these. Le- Johnny Unitas. Terry Bradshaw. Here you go. Here's how many. Uh, boy, did Russell Wilson at 17 has 113 wins. Joe Flacco, legend in running the quarterback into the end zone. Here's your boy McNabb. He's 19th. Troy Aikman, Ken Stabler. Bart Starr, Steve Young, Drew Bledsoe, Phil Sims, Len Dawson, Bob Greasy. Round out your top 30. There ain't one rushing quarterback on this list that translates to wins. Stop with that stuff with, well, my quarterback had 10 rushing touchdowns. And? Doesn't, re- doesn't translate into the greatest running quarterback of all times, Michael v- uh, could be Lamar. This is the problem that Baltimore's having. They're not sure that translates into wins. He's checking the regular season boxes off because he's winning 78% of his games. But he really hasn't had a great postseason yet. Eastside Monster says something that I'm going to agree with. To be fair, Dan, the game changed, though, Big Sills. Salary cap has changed it, for sure. But isn't it funny? Let's take a look at the final four quarterbacks that were in the final four when it came to conference championships. I wouldn't say Patrick Mahomes is a rushing touchdown machine in Kansas City. Josh Allen had 36 touchdown passes. Um, Joe Burrow's not going to break any sundials or any of Hussein Bolt's records. Who else here? Aaron Rodgers, Tom Brady, Matthew Stafford. I hear the game has changed. Well, how come the dynamic of winning from the pocket hasn't? How come that hasn't changed? You keep the game has changed for receivers, for defenders. 
But why is it? Hey, and you know what, too, what Xander and I said? Every Monday after a playoff game, you know what we kept doing? I want me one of those. And we were talking about Jalen Hurts. And again, not shade on Jalen. We were more talking about style of play. That's why when I see Kyler Murray now talking about $40 million, really? Do you truly believe in your heart that style of play that Kyler Murray, Lamar Jackson, why do you think they're trying to get more talent around Josh Allen in the backfield and running the ball and getting more old linemen in the building and improving the defense because of three and outs? They're looking at longevity for Josh Allen in Buffalo. They don't want him being a 98-yard rusher, three touchdowns rushing, three touchdowns. They don't want that. You'll never last 10 years in this league. Ask Michael Vick. Ask Cam Newton. Cam Newton is a shell of himself today. Hell, Jalen Hurts had a surgery at the end of the year in his first year starting. You think that trend is changing? Again, I'm bringing this up because Kyler Murray, I see the same style. Okay? Flex, Burrow is going to be a... Burroughs changed a culture in Cincinnati. Cincinnati, Ohio. By the way, we're scheduled to have Doc Rivers at the bottom of the hour, so we'll transition tonight. Don't forget, game one of the NBA playoffs. Plus, we'll get some Sixer talk, and we will talk with him bottom of the hour, 3.30 Eastern time, so be prepared for that. Rogers' first Super Bowl can't win on his floor. Quest, name me a quarterback that's got a bet that has more postseason wins right now outside of Brady that's active. Name me one. I'll wait. Name me one. One active quarterback that has more postseason wins than Aaron Rodgers. There isn't. There isn't. By the way, what's Russell Wilson done since he went to those two Super Bowls early in his career? I'll wait on that. He's 9-7 and in the postseason. I brought that up yesterday. Okay? You make it sound like these quarterbacks... Peyton Manning, 14-13 and in the postseason. You're making it sound like these quarterbacks have these insane postseason records because you're, 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 you're evaluating them against Brady and Montana. That's unfair. I think Joe's 16 and five and Tom's like won 36 ball games in the postseason, seven Super Bowls. Can't compare anything to that. The playoffs show us every year. You need a quarterback that can make the throw to win Kevin. That's exactly correct. And every year we have a conversation on whether or not the style of play here. Let me ask you this and tell me if you agree. Don't you think the Eagles are also debating this? If you're debating this in Baltimore or you're debating this in Arizona this week with OTAs, you think the Eagles are not sitting here going, can we win like this? And by the way, I'm not talking about winning, just winning. I'm talking about being a championship contender every year. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Look, watch this. If you're satisfied with 9-10 wins, This style of play might be for you. But if you're looking, hey, by the way, you didn't win that Super Bowl in 17 with this style of play. You won it with a pocket passer. And the guy who got hurt at 11 and 2 is a pocket passer. How did you get here? How did you get from Nick Foles and Carson Wentz who delivered a Super Bowl as a tandem to this? What has changed your opinion? Because the guy works hard. He's a good dude. By the way, I checked into Sports Take earlier. And I heard some analyst on there go, well, this is the first time that he's had a coordinator to you. So you had Nick Saban, Steve Sarkeesian. You had Lincoln Riley. You had Doug Peterson. Those aren't shitty coaches. Those are some of the best coaches on the planet. 
They may be different systems, and I grant you that. But don't tell me that Jalen Hurts hasn't had the best coaches on the planet, plus being coached by his pop. I don't subscribe to that. My coach was Nick Saban and Lincoln Riley, and my coordinator's the head coach of the Texas Longhorns. How is that shitty coaching? I get the consistency. You like to have the same guy in the... I get it. He's right. But don't tie that in to Jalen not having had the best coaches around him. That's not true. I mean, that's something that you're using as a freeway off-ramp for him. Okay? Can't call Allen. Dude, anybody who call, calls Allen names is an idiot. Josh Allen's getting the best coaching he's ever had in his life in Buffalo. You think he got great coaching at Wyoming? He wasn't even a top high school prospect coming out of college or high school. So the best coaching that he has had has been in the NFL. Brian Dable, Ken Dorsey, Sean McDermott have given him the best coaching he's ever had in Buffalo. And it's showing he's improving mightily every year. By the way, at the end of this year, Josh Allen might be the best quarterback in the NFL when everything is said and done. That game against Patrick Mahomes made people do this. Holy shit, this guy is on the rise. Because I left that game going like this. Next three years, man, that guy's going to be unstoppable. Okay? Josh Allen could be the best quarterback in the game at the end of the year. Plus, you're putting talent around him. You're improving the running game. You got great coaching. We'll see if that Brian Dable move for Dable going to the Giants is an effect on how they approach games now because, look, it's a different play caller. We all know when Frank Wright left Carson Wentz, that was a complete different dynamic when it came to play calling for him. When you lose a coordinator, hey, you, you want to hear something? Tom Moore was Peyton Manning's offensive coordinator for over a decade. For 10 straight years, Tom Moore was Peyton Manning's offensive coordinator. Do you know who Ben Roethlisberger's um, coordinator was for the majority of his first start of his career? It was Bruce Arians. So when you have that dynamic, I'm not going to get away from having the fact that if you have consistency at your play caller, that's going to help the growth of your quarterback too. I get that. You're right. Daz says, I don't understand how you can defend Hurts. Well, Daz, because they like him. And, 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 and it's cool. Hey, we're talking on June 2nd like this. It's cool. But no need to get personal with the damn dude. I like Jalen. I'm rooting for him to succeed. I know some of you don't. Hey, I'm pointing out what I see, not what I'm hoping for. You guys are talking about what you're hoping for. There's a complete different dynamic in how I'm presenting this and how you're taking this and where it's landing for you. You take it as bashing. I'm taking it as what I see today. You guys are talking in ifs and in fantasy. Well, let's see. I'll show you. Okay. Dude, we're rooting for them. Who's not? Nobody's rooting for the Eagles to fail, which means if he fails, they fail. Nobody's doing that here. There's nobody on the planet rooting for him to fail. We're pointing, or I am, pointing out what I see. How do you translate that into not facts? Some, some of you guys go like this. Well, Seals, you flip-flopped. Well, because if I'm flip-flopping, that means Jalen Hurts' play is inconsistent. I'll tell you one thing I don't flip-flop on is Tom Brady. Okay? I flip-flop on Aaron Rodgers. Great regular season. Watch this. Here's... Here's my evaluation, how I see some of the great quarterbacks in the game. Just so you know, it's not all Jalen. Aaron Rodgers, best thrower of the football I've ever seen. 
maybe the greatest talent. Unbelievable the way he spins the ball. Great in the regular season. Inconsistent in the postseason, even though he's won a Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford, really a great year in Los Angeles. And some pretty good years up in Detroit. Not great. Is he a Hall of Famer? No, I compare him to Drew Bledsoe. Maybe a tick above Drew. How do you see Kyler Murray? I don't like that style of play to win a Super Bowl. He can win some games, and I'll tell you what, he's really fun to watch. It's like watching a Madden game. Same thing with Lamar Jackson, like watching a Madden game. Watching uh, Jalen Hurts, like watching a Madden game. What other quarter? Josh Allen, um, he's an anomaly. Special. Trey Lance, I don't know. Jimmy Garoppolo, it's weird, but that guy wins, and he wins consistently. His win percentage has been incredible, and he's 5-2 and two in the postseason. Would I want him on my team? Absolutely. That's how I see guys, because that's what they are. Okay? To, what, what's happened is you're giving a dude so much credit for showing up on I, – I guess in – you know, I guess in today's sports world – I guess showing up on time and working hard, guys get pats on the back for that now. We're in my time, and I guess I'm sounding like, oh, man, get off my lawn. I thought those were givens. Hey, and one, and one more time here. I'm not rooting for that kid to fail. 